just showed in Part D of this example is how to do the constrained optimization using the substitution approach. An alternative approach that we can use for constrained optimization is the Lagrange multiplier approach. In Part E of this example, we're going to optimize the same function that we looked at in Part D, but this time we're going to use the Lagrange multiplier approach instead of the substitution approach for our optimization. The results will end up being the same, but it's a different process. So when we use a Lagrange multiplier, what we do is we take our constraint, 20 is equal to x1 plus 2x2. Call this our budget m. So this is m is our budget. And we manipulate this. We take m minus the full constraint values, and that's the x1 plus 2x2. So this is 20 minus x1 minus 2x2. What would this be equal to? This is really zero. I've moved everything over to one side of the equation. This is really equal to zero. When we do the Lagrange approach, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up an equation. I should write our utility function first. We're now going to set up our Lagrange equation where we're going to have Lagrange, this fancy L here, and it's going to be a function of x1, x2, and this new variable that we refer to as lambda. What this is going to be, it's going to be equal to our original utility, which is a function of x1 and x2, plus lambda times this 20 minus x1 minus 2x2, our budget minus our constraining values. This is really adding on zero to the equation. So this becomes 2x1 to the power of 0 0.5, x2 to the power of 0 0.5, plus lambda times 20 minus x1 minus 2x2. And this is our utility, but we've added in this new variable lambda. This is an alternative approach. It's called the Lagrange approach. You will have to know both the substitution approach we just went over and this approach to get through calculus. So now what we do is we take the partial derivative of this Lagrange formula with respect to x1, we take the partial derivative with respect to x2, and we take the partial derivative with respect to lambda. So taking the partial derivative with respect to x1, for my first term, the derivative becomes 2x2 to the power of 0 0.5 times the derivative of x1 to the power of 0 0.5. It's 0 0.5 x1 to the power of negative 0 0.5. Now for the second term, the derivative is going to be lambda becomes a scalar coefficient times the derivative of negative x1 is negative 1. So this gives me 2 and 0 0.5 combined to give me 1. x2 to the power of 0 0.5 x1 to the power of negative 0 0.5 minus lambda. The next thing I do is I take the derivative with respect to x2. So the derivative with respect to x2 is going to be 2x1 to the power of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5x2 to the power of negative 0 0.5 plus lambda is a scalar coefficient times the derivative of negative 2x2 is negative 2. So my 2 and my 0 0.5 cancel each other out. I have x1 to the power of 0 0.5, x2 to the power of negative 0 0.5 minus 2 lambda. Finally, I take the derivative with respect to lambda. The first term, the derivative is 0, so I just ignore that. For the second term, I have 20 minus x1 minus 2x2 is really a scalar coefficient to lambda. And then I do the derivative of lambda, which is really 1. So this gives me 20 minus x1 minus 2x2. So now I have all of my partial derivatives. The next step is to set them to be equal to 0.
So I'm going to set each of these partial derivatives to be equal to zero, and I solve this system of equations. So this is going to be equation one, equation two, and equation three. So for equation one, I have x1 to the power of negative 0 0.5, x2 to the power of 0 0.5 minus lambda is equal to zero. I'm going to move lambda over to the other side, and I get x1 to the power of negative 0 0.5, x2 to the power of 0 0.5 is equal to lambda. For equation two, I have x1 to the power of 0 0.5, x2 to the power of negative 0 0.5 minus 2 lambda is equal to 0. I'm going to move 2 lambda over to the other side. I have x1 to the power of 0 0.5, x2 to the power of negative 0 0.5 is equal to 2 lambda. Dividing both sides by 2, I get 0 0.5, x1 to the power of 0 0.5, x2 to the power of negative 0 0.5, is also equal to lambda. So now let's call this equation four and this equation five. You can see that both of them, we have lambda isolated. So using equations four and five, we can say four is equal to five. Lambda will be equal to lambda. So I take x1 to the power of negative 0.5, x2 to the power of 0 0.5 will be equal to 0 0.5, x1 to the power of 0 0.5, x2 to the power of negative 0 0.5. So now I'm going to um, move all my negative exponents to the denominators. So on the left, I have x2 to the power of positive 0 0.5 divided by x1 to the power of 0 0.5. And on the right, I have 0 0.5 x1 to the power of positive 0 0.5. And now I'm going to put in the denominator x2 to the power of 0 0.5. I can now cross multiply. So I get x2 to the power of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 gives me 1 is equal to 0 0.5 x1 to the power of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 gives me 1. So now I have a relationship x2 is equal to 0 0.5 x1. We'll call this equation 6. And let's not forget I have this third equation here. So I'm going to substitute that new relationship, x2 is equal to 0 0.5 x1, into this third relationship. So taking equation 3, 20 minus x1, minus 2x2 is equal to 0, I'm going to sub in this new relationship. So I have 20 minus x1 minus 2 times 0.5x1 will be equal to 0. So I have 20 minus x1 minus 2 times 0.5 gives me x1. 20 minus 2x1 is equal to 0. I'm going to move 2x1 to the other side of the equation. 20 is equal to 2x1. Dividing both sides by 2, I get x1 is equal to 10. I'm going to also use the relationship x2 is equal to 0.5x1. It's what we had substituted in. To get, this, to get our solution for x1. So it's going to be 0 0.5 times our x1 value of 10. x2 is equal to 5. So now I have my optimal values of x1 and x2, and I'm going to uh, determine the associated utility by substituting those into my equation for utility. Utility is equal to 2x1 to the power of 0 0.5 times x2 to the power of 0 0.5. So my maximum utility is going to be 2 times my x1 value of 10 to the power of 0 0.5 times my x2 value of 5 to the power of 0 0.5, giving me 14.1421 as my maximum utility. So a different approach 
with the same end results. X1 is equal to 10, X2 is equal to five, and maximum utility is 14.1421. Questions on that? Essentially, I, I chose this approach because it's fairly straightforward. Because the lambdas are so easy to isolate, what I can do is using the first two equations, I can make lambdas equal to lambda. And then I can get x1 in terms of x2. We'll never have lambdas in the third equation, just the nature of the Lagrange. Um, the derivative here, it's always going to eliminate the lambda. And so once you're down to two variables, you can use employ the third equation at that point. It's a really good strategy to employ when you're solving the Lagrange equations. Yes, there are times when we're going to use this process instead of substitution. In fact, in nine, module 9b, we're going to be pretty much exclusively using Lagrange approach. Furthermore, in econ, sometimes they'll use substitution, sometimes they'll use Lagrange. You really have to understand both to be able to keep up with the content. It's kind of two forms of a sentence structure. You, while you may prefer using one way of developing a sentence, you have to understand when somebody else uses a different form of a sentence. Math is very similar in how we communicate. I will either tell you which method I want you to use or I'll let you choose. Now, in your homework, I recommend trying both ways and, and just regulating yourself, sometimes using substitution, sometimes using the Lagrange approach. 